All right. Turn this on. Okay. All right. Welcome back, folks, to another lecture of CSS E332. Um, today we're going to keep, keep going discussing our ideas of paging and how do we handle virtual memory in the operating system. Um, this will be the lecture before the last on paging, so we're going to do one more on Thursday, and then we'll start our security module on um, Friday. Um, before we begin, are there any seniors who will be graduating this year? Okay, so um, I guess this includes all of you then. For the project that my news how things are going to go. Next week, your final advanced assignment is going to be due on Friday. So that's the last day of classes, right? Your project is going to be due anytime during the final speed until the last day of finals. Okay, so otherwise I won't have time to, to grade. So any you can submit any time until the last day of finals, this is the latest that I can accept uh, a, a, a solution because this leaves me only two days to grade things um, and get the, 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 the grades. All right, so any time between the end of um, the quarter or and the last day of finals, I'm not sure is when that is, but whenever that is, I'm, I'll, I'll double check. Whenever that is, um, it's going to be due on um, Python. Um, another announcement is next week we're going to have a guest lecture on Friday. So that's the last we're going to conclude with a guest lecture. Um, it will be um, by the Chief Information Security Officer at a company called Supernova Investments. So they are a company that deal with um, uh, people's investments and they I don't know, keep portfolios and all of that of people's investments and they interface with banks a lot. And he's going to be talking about, you know, how do they handle the security of, and privacy of all of this information, and all of this sensitive information, because it contains a lot of data that are um, very, very tricky to deal with. So um, we're going to be talking about those. Next. Um, today we're going to have an activity. There, there is an activity due, and as as, no, as usual, this is it's going to be due tomorrow by um, 2 p.m. So, which is one um, if we would have had class, this is when we would have um, have the class. One last thing about next Friday is that um, I'm not going to ask um, the person to do the lecture twice. So what we're going to do is that we're going to just do it virtually at 1 p.m. And then if you can't attend it, there, is, there will be a recording of, uh, of the session. So technically, there will be, we will not be meeting at 2 p.m. We will be meeting at 1 p.m. Um, to just virtually to um, talk to, to um, the guest lecture. And then if you can't make it at 1 p.m., um, you can just view the recording. What time? That's this Friday or next Friday? Next Friday. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll make a, another set of announcements, but I just um, wanted to let you guys know um, what's coming up next. Okay. So let's continue our discussion of paging. And last lecture, we were looking at ways in which we want to create a mapping between virtual memory and physical memory. And we were trying to um, keep this illusion going off. So the OS is playing, playing the role of the illusionist, the illusion that each process owns the entire memory. So each process thinks that it owns all of the addresses between zero and the max number of address possible. And the way we created this illusion is by creating a mapping between virtual memory and the actual RAM or physical. The first technique we looked at was segmentation, in which we map each part of the address space into a specific segment of its own. And those segments are variable already in their length. And we saw that this leads to external 
fragmentation. And we set out last lecture or the lecture before the last to solve the problem of external fragmentation because it was wasteful for us to have the room to host another process but not being able to do so because that space was not contiguous. And our solution to that, to avoid external fragmentation, was paging. And with, with paging, what we did is the following. We split our virtual memory into fixed sized pages. And we also split our virtual our physical memory into fixed sized chunks. So these are fixed sized chunks. So in virtual memory, they're called pages. In physical memory, we call them page frames or simply frames. OK, so next up we did is we created this mapping between each and every virtual page and physical page. And we said that the OS is going to sit somewhere here. So OS plus hardware are going to sit here and they're going to allow us to perform this translation from the virtual page to the physical frame. OK, so you can think of it as a black box in here. That takes a virtual page number or a VPN and it goes it spits out a physical frame number or PF. And we said that. The process where this information is stored is actually going to be in a huge table. And this table holds all the mappings between the physical virtual page number, the physical frame number, it has some valid bits and bookkeeping stuff. So each one of these is called a page table entry. So the page table is simply a data structure that contain the mappings from the virtual page number to the actual physical frame number. And that is what was helping us do this translation. Right? So every time we allocate a memory, every time we call malloc, we're going to be um, creating an entry inside of this page table to map a virtual page number to a physical page number. Then every time we want to access the memory, we have to get the physical frame number from the um, page table, then add it to the offset, and then we go about accessing memory node. So in order to facilitate that, we um, took our address and we split it in two. And we said if, for example, we had 32 bits of address, and we have four kilobyte pages. So how many bits did we say we need to index into the four kilobyte pages? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be 12 bits to index into. And that's because four kilobytes is two to the two times two to the 10 bytes. OK, so we need 12 bits. The lower 12 bits. Are going to be the offset bits. And this leaves us. With the upper 20 bits. We do this here. OK, so the upper 20 bits are going to represent the actual 
virtual agent. So anytime I want to access memory, I'm going to do two things. A, I'm going to index the page table using the virtual page number and obtain the physical frame number. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to access memory at EFN plus awesome. OK, so I take the outcome of the page table. I add my offset in here to it, and that's exactly when I go to what I go to memory with, get the actual data that I need. So if we have 20 bits of virtual page numbers, how many virtual pages can we actually have? So how, can, how many virtual pages can we index? Yep. 20 bits. Yeah, exactly. So if I tell you that, you know, the virtual page number uh, number is eight bits long. This means there are two to the eight or 256 or 256 possible things to index. Right, if, with eight bits, I can at most index 256 things. So with 20 bits, I can index at most two to the 20 virtual pages can be indexed. OK, so if we assume that each page table entry, so you call the page table entry is simply a row in the page table. So if we assume that each page table entry is four bytes, then we need four times two to the 20 bytes, which is equal to four megabytes of space to hold the page table. So what this means is that I have 20 bits. I can index two to the 20 entries. Each entry is four bytes. So in total, that gives us four megabytes of space that I have to allocate just for the page table. OK, so the page table for each process, because we also want to give the illusion to each process that it owns everything. So each process is going to need four megabytes to store its page table. OK, so imagine we have a hundred of these processes and we're switching context switching between those. So this means that 400 megabytes of our memory is just used for page tables. Which is crazy, right? Because imagine I have only two gigabytes of memory. This means 25% of my memory is gone just to do page tables. I haven't done anything in my code yet. I haven't allocated memory. I haven't called malloc. I haven't done anything yet. And I already occupied 400 megabytes. So that's going to be problem number one, which is that the page table is large and per process. OK, if you look at this diagram, can you tell or these two diagrams together? Can you recall what the second problem was with phase three? Yeah, go ahead. 
take one and one frame and a little bit yeah. Yeah. So that's another problem. Um, it's if I use a page and 20% of a page, then um, I'm actually wasting up a full page, right? Let's say I need the one page and one byte, and I occupy two pages, and I end up with what we call I'm going to call this problem three, internal fragmentation. So the fact that inside of the pages, we're going to have wasted space. So wasted space inside the pages. Okay. So, other problems you can pinpoint with this structure. If I want to access, if I have a statement that says x equals a of i, how many memory references do I need to access a of i? Yeah. Yeah, I have an address, so it's like A of I is basically A plus I. So let's say I resolve that to the virtual address. So I have a virtual address now. How many physical addresses or how many memory accesses do I need to get the actual value contained in that address? Two. Instead of going to the physical memory directly, I have to first go to the page table. Then I will go to the physical. So every memory access, so that's problem number two. Every memory access is now two memory accesses. One for the page table. And one for um, the actual data. And we're going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about how do we address these problems. Now, the only thing we're not going to touch upon is problem number three. Problem number three is just a problem that we're going to have to live with, right? Because when a process says, I need a page and a byte, there's no other way than to give it two pages. And, you know, it's wasteful. We can do, the programmers can do something. So, for example, in the Linux kernel, using a page and a byte is not acceptable. Right, and sometimes the compiler might scream at you that you're using something that's outside the boundaries of a page. So, but that's only if you're programming at a very, very, very high performance level. If you're doing same things in Python and Java and C++ and all of that, the likelihood that you're going to worry about how many pages is your code using is, is, is small. Except if you're really picky about performance, then, then you have to worry about these small issues. Okay. So we're going to put problem three to sleep and then focus on problems one and two. So let's start with problem two. What do you suggest we do to solve the issue of having to do two memory accesses every time we need to fetch one address? So any ideas about what do you think we can do? <coughs> I 
So here's an example. If I have a page that's four kilobyte of addresses, right? How many virtual addresses are represented in this? It's so if we're doing byte addressing, so if, if our void pointer addresses bytes, then we have at least 4K addresses contained within this page. How many, now the question is, how many page table entries do those 4K addresses occupy? So inside of the page table, when I want to translate, let's say this is zero to, um, uh, let's let's use 16 bytes to make our lives easier. So this is zero to 16. This is page one. Okay, how many page table entries do I need to map those 16 addresses? One, because they all map to the same page. So I have something that, um, remember, we split the address into the virtual page number. So the top four bits are going to be the same for all of these 16 addresses. So they're going to map to the same page table. So all of these are going to map to the same page table entry. Now here comes the question. If I want to access all 16 of those, under the current assumptions, how many memory accesses would I end up with? 32, right? So if I want to access the 16 addresses, I end up with 32 memory accesses. But however, 16 of those are to the same thing, right? So half of them are always referencing this page table entry. So 16 of those are to the same page table entry. So if, that the if that's the case, what do you think we can do when there's something that we are accessing very frequently? Think back to your um, comp art class. Yeah. Sure. Something close, close, close to that. So, what's the other? What's the next best thing after a register? Yeah. Disk is the slowest. Yeah, so, so the heap is going to be in virtual memory, but recall if this if this is the processor, I think the image we used to draw was something like this. We had a level here of one type of memory, and then another one here that's RAM. So what's between this processor and the RAM? Look, so it, it sounds something like this. So this assume this is a bag. Cash, right? It's a this looks like a bag of cash. <laughs> so anytime we have something that we're accessing this frequently, we're gonna put it in a cache. Right? So this is the cache that sits between the RAM and the actual CP. And the reason what we're going to do is that we're going to take this address, the page table access, and we're going to try to cache this address. And the way we do it is by introducing something called the translation look aside buffer or the TLB. OK, so it's it's called TLB for historical reasons. Um, whoever designed it first, they decided to call it TLB 
but um, it's it's more accurately a cache of the page table. We put a base, a, a subset of the page table inside that cache. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take put a subset of the page table. in fast memory, which is the TLB, and improve access performance. Yeah. What did that say look? Uh, look aside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's how things are going to happen. I have a virtual address. Let's say this is A of I. So this is the address of A of I. And I want to access it from them. Here's how things are going to work. Step one, I go to the TLB. I check, is the address of A of I inside of the TLB? So we have two cases. So case one, or no, step two, what we call a TLB hit, which means that the virtual address is actually present in the TLB. So we, we incurred what we call a cache hit, so we found the thing we need. So what we're gonna end up with is a physical frame number. Then we're gonna take the offset from our address and go to main memory. Okay, so that's the, that's the, the memory location we want, and that's A of I. Now, the other ca case is in here, step three, is if we miss in the TLB. So we try to look in the cache, but we don't find the address that we're looking for. It's not there. It might be in the page table, but it's not in the cache because the cache holds a subset of the page table. So once, if we miss, what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to go find the page table we're going to go to the page table and get the PFN added to the offset and then go to it. So we added a small, very, very fast step. The trick is that this thing is very fast. it's much, much faster than accessing memory. So instead of doing two memory accesses for each A of I, there's a high chance that for A of I, I'm gonna do a cache access and one memory access, or in the worst case, a cache access and two memory accesses, if I miss into the cache. Now, the probability that I'm gonna hit in the cache for most pro pro programs um, we're going to see that if they exhibit certain properties, then it's much more likely to um, for us to hit in the cache than to miss into the cache. Okay, so I'm, let's take a small example. Here's a small example. Sum is equal to zero for i. Zero, I less than ten. Plus plus. So, if we're looking at this piece of code, is there a property that you can look at, or is there something that will make this piece of code be? Or, or increase the likelihood that this piece of code is gonna incur hits into the TLB? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the array is going to be probably contiguous in memory. And it's going to be, a, if, if it's just 10 entries, it's probably going to be in one page. If it's, let's say, you know, more than 10 and more than four kilobytes of size, then it's going to be in two pages next to each other, right? So we're going to we're going to be able to hit into the TLD. So let's see. Let's take an example to get the numbers out. All right, so. Uh, there we go. Let's take this example. Where we assume that each page frame. Holds four at most four integers. So in this page frame, we have an empty place. We have A of 0, A of 1, A of 2. And in the next page frame, we have 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we have 7, 8, and 8, 9. So this is, let's call this six, seven, eight. This is frame six, frame seven, and frame. So I know in my page table, so that's my page table, that A of zero to two, map to page six, A of three to six, Map to page seven, and A of seven to nine, map to page eight. Okay, so now let's assume we start with an empty TLB. So the TLB is initially empty. What's going to happen when I try to access A of zero? Am I going to have a TLB hit or a TLB miss? All right, so we're going to miss in the TLB. We're going to go, so we're going to miss in here. We're going to go and figure out that it's entry six. Grab the entry from here and return it back. But what we're also going to do is we're going to move things from the cache, from the page table into the cache. So A of zero to two maps to six. So now what's going to happen when we try to access A of 1, we're going to go to here. We're going to see that it's at address, at physical address 6, and we're going to incur a hit in the TLB. Same thing is going to happen for A of 2. We're going to hit in the TLB. And then we keep going and repeating. A of 3 is going to miss. And then A of four to six is gonna hit. A of seven is gonna miss. And A of eight to nine are gonna cause or are gonna incur hits. So once we have those things figured out, we can compute what we call the hit rate of the TLB, which is defined as the number of hits over number of hits plus number of misses. So this is going to turn out to be, in this case, we have seven hits and 10 accesses, so 0.7, or what we call it a 70% hit rate. Right? So this means that 70% of the time in our access, in our code, we're actually able to hit into the TLB. At 30% of the time, we're actually missing in the TLB. What this translates to is 30% of the time, we have to go and to um, look into the page table. Then, in, uh, so basically, go, let's go back to here. We have to go look into the page table, then figure out where to go, and then return. But 70% of the time, we're going to take this shortcut. Now, 70% of the time for a cache is not really, really good. 
but when you actually measure the performance, you're gonna get better hit rates. Sometimes you might get too close to 90%. Um, it just depends on um, the nature of the program, right? But at least in 70% of the time, we saved on memory accesses. Questions? Okay. So let's, that's how we solved problem two. So by introducing this TLB, we were able to address or somewhat address problem two, right? We, 70% of the time we're reducing the, um, the second memory access that we have to pay. So how do we, ask, how do we solve the problem of having a page table that's too large for each process? So now we're going to tackle problem one. So the idea in problem one, why we have a problem is that this is our page table. It can hold two to the 20 entries. But how likely, so two to the 20 pages, this corresponds to about four gigabytes of RAM. So how likely is it that your process is gonna be using four gigabytes of RAM? Not very likely, right? If you're running a process that needs four gigs of RAM, you're probably running this process on some dedicated you know, server or a cluster of servers where you have a lot of memory, right? But on your machine, on your laptops, on your desktops, it's unlikely that you're going to need a process that needs or that uses four gigabytes of RAM or the entire address space. So what this translates to is that a lot of these entries are unused. So what do you think we can do to get rid of these unused entries? So if, for example, if I had one here, maps to 12, two maps to 13, and then nothing, and then 16 maps to, or index two to the 20 minus one, maps to 100. And everything in between is just unvalid. Yeah. Yeah, so in a sense, we're doing something that's um, kind of like on demand. You know, whenever you need something, I create this map. But the problem is a little bit deeper than that, in that if you recall what we did here, uh, where did we write that? We said we're going to index the page table. So in order to index into something, everything has to already be allocated, right? You can't access A of I if A has not been allocated. So if this entire thing have not been allocated, we can't even do on-demand paging. So what do you think we can do if I already know that only three entries of my two to the 20 are going to be occupied. What do you think we can do? Let's assume we know. That. Okay. Yeah, so in a sense, we we're trying to compress the stable into just holding these three entries, right? And get rid of all the other ones. And the way we achieve that is as every problem in computer science, you always solve it with one more level of indirection, right? One more level of abstraction. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use pages or we're gonna use paging to store the page table. So 
So we're going to split up our page table into pages. And now I can use on demand pages. So if I need an entry in here, and then and only then do I allocate this page. If I don't need that entry, I will not allocate that page. If I need this entry, entries one and two, I only allocate the first page. If I need entry two to the 20 minus one, I only allocate the last page. So here's how things are going to look like. When we add levels of indirection, this translate to, translates to adding an extra memory access, right? So remember the case when we had the inodes where we divided the address into blocks and then we had offsets into those blocks and then we get the inode from there? We're going to do something that looks exactly the same. We're going to split our access in two things. What we're first going to call the page directory And then we're going to have the pages for the page table. So page, table, pages. And then only the ones that I actually need are going to be allocated. In this case, for example, I have one and two. They map to P0. So I just go to P0 to find them out. And I have 2 to the 20 minus 1 maps to 2p, I don't know, 100. So I just go to p 100. And everything in between, I'm just not allocating. Okay. So what this translates to is, again, we're going to split things up once one more time. So we had 12 bits for the offset and 20 bits for the virtual page number. What we're going to do now is we're also going to split this into we're going to use the upper level bits to index into the page directory. And we're going to use the lower level bits to index to offset into page. OK, so we just added one more level of indirection instead of doing one look up for the page table. I have to first go to the page directory and figure out which page of the page table should I be accessing. I go and access that one, and then I finally find out the virtual ad, the physical address that I want to access, and then go to solve this, to, to fetch the address. Okay, so uh, take an example real quick. So let's assume we have 16 bytes uh, or 16 addresses in virtual memory. And let's assume the only ones that we have mapped are 0 maps to 12, 1 maps to 13, 3 maps to 100, and 15, 14, maps to 86, and 15, maps to 15. In the, original, in the original case, what we had to do was we had to allocate all 16 of those elements, and then say 0, 12, 1, 13, 3, 100. And then this is going to be empty, 14, 86, and 15, 15. And everything in here will be allocated, but unused. Okay. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to split this into four. So we're going to split the page table into four pages. And only two of them will be allocated. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. So in here I have 0, 12, 1, 13, 3, 100, and 14, 86, 15, 15. What's going to go into the page directory is saying that anything that has the upper level four bits of 0, so anything that starts with 0, 0, 0, X, 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 any, any lower level bits is going to map to P0. And anything that has 1, 1, 1, 1, and then a bunch of stuff is going to map to um, P1, 1, 1, 0. Sorry. Uh, let's call this P100. So it's going to map to P100. OK, so that's how. Instead of putting 16 addresses, we only have to store 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 addresses. So that's a cut by half. We can store this entire thing in only. Three pages. Of OK, so as a, as a concrete example, in the Intel. X86 processor, there's four levels of indirection. Or what we call a four level page table. And here's how things are divided. We have 12 bits for the offset. And we have nine bits for page level three, nine bits for page level two, nine bits for page level one, and then another nine bits for the directory index or page directory. OK, so we have four levels. The first or, or all of these four levels are nine bits each, which is two to the nine. So 512 um, entries in each page. So 512 entries for each level one, 512 times 512 in level two, 512 cubed in, in level three and 512 to the fourth and level four, and then the offsets. Now, if you add those up, this amounts to only 48 bits, right? And modern Intel CPUs have 64 bits. So where did the 12 bits go? So it turns out that they have been lying to you. When they tell you that your address space is 64 bits, effectively, you're only going to be using 48 of those bits. The remaining upper level 12 bits are just ignored. So even if you're using 64 bit pointers, the 12 bits are always, the first 12 bits are always ignored. But this amounts to 256 terabytes of RAM. And the reasoning why they said we're not going to use 48, more than 48 bits is the following. Once we get to a point where we can produce 256 terabytes of RAM cheaply to put them in machines, then we're going to worry about 64 bit addressing. For now, we're just going to worry about 48 bit addressing. Now, why the number 48? Who knows, right? Um, it's, it's, it goes back to the developers that actually started. All right, so on Thursday, we're going to wrap up our discussion of paging. We're talking eventually about page replacement algorithms. 
So I'll see you guys on Thursday. Uh, it's on mode. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have one more. Uh,